Hey guys, Brandon with Flying Miata. Today we are going to install the Mazda Motorsports NANB front hubs. All right, so today we're gonna to install this Mazda Motorsports NANB front hub setup on this NB Miata. So it starts with a 4150 chromoly body. Uh, you can see it's got a nice radius back here to get rid of stress risers. Comes with ARP bullnose studs uh, and a new axle nut as well. Carefully sealed against water intrusion, uh, water and dirt. Make sure the bearings live a nice long life. Uses tapered roller bearings, they're NSKs. These are legitimate NSKs and not counterfeits because that is a surprisingly large problem. Uh, but big burly bearings that handle the load fine, no problem. It also comes with very carefully calculated and machined spacers so that there is no adjustment. You don't have to worry about whether you got the adjustment right or wrong or going back in there and fixing it later or anything like that. You just assemble it, torque it, and you're good to go. So I'm going to show you how all the parts go together real quick here. It's not that complicated, but just to give you a real quick rundown, because uh, you can't see stuff as we're installing it quite as clearly. So take your body, get your bearing. Uh, the bearings are identical when they are brand new. They are not identical once they've been worn in. So that goes in against that seat. Seal goes in here. The seal does not fit all the way flush. So don't hammer it in until it's all the way flush because you will be breaking things. This guy goes in there inside of that seal and this O-ring goes into the groove, just like that. Then we've got this spacer here, that slips in. The other bearing, that slips in. We've got this spacer here. It's important that this tapered edge goes towards the car or down in this orientation. So that's gonna slip in there. Axle nut, of course, cap, and then screws to hold the cap in. So that's how it all goes together. All right, I'm gonna go through the tools and supplies that I need real quick to do the job. So I've got an impact with a socket to get the wheels off. I've got a ratchet and a 14 millimeter socket to get the brakes off, the caliper off. Uh, the rotor should just slip off. I have a chisel and a hammer to get the dust cap off. I've got a punch and a hammer to unstake the axle nut. I have a 28 millimeter socket and an impact or a breaker bar to get the hub nut off. Uh, I've got grease to grease the bearings. Ideally, we'd be using Day Lube nano ceramic racing grease. The bearings are strong enough, so they'll probably be fine with any grease, but still, better grease is better. I've got some sealant to seal the dust cap onto, uh, into place, and then I have a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten the dust cap down. And then I've got safety glasses because eyeballs are important, and that should be it. Okay, so first step, believe it or not, is to take everything off. So I'm gonna take the wheel, the caliper, the rotor, and the hub off. Um, not gonna give you guys the specifics on that, pretty straightforward, um, you can watch me do it. This does not need to be removed to do this job. It just makes uh, the camera work a little bit easier. So we've got the old hub off. Now we just need to make sure to get the surface nice and clean. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of rust. This, one's, this one doesn't have any rust on it. But if you have any rust there, you wanna take a Scotch-Brite, scuff it off um, to get back to just a virgin metal surface. There's a lot of gunk up against the edge here. Make sure you clean it all off. Don't assume that if 
the other old hub, the original hub wasn't touching it, the new hub won't, also won't touch it. That's not necessarily the case. So I'm gonna make sure to get this as spotless as possible. All right, so be sure, once you think it's clean, go back over it, look at it really closely, make sure it is actually spotless and clean. This one looks pretty good now, so we're ready to move on. Okay, so now we're ready to start assembling the hub. So we're gonna grab the hub, we're gonna grab our grease. One of the nice things about these bearings, because they're so burly, you don't have to get real specific with the kind of grease. That having been said, better grease is always better. Um, we are slightly ill-prepared and we don't have great grease, so we're just gonna use this stuff. Uh, the Daylube Nano Ceramic Racing Grease is the preferred uh, grease for you. So, But for now, we're gonna improvise. So I'm gonna get some grease on both of the races. Uh, a little bit easier. We're only doing the inner bearing now, but it is easier to do this now than when it's on the spindle, so. Okay, so now we're going to grease the bearing. Now we need to make sure to pack the bearing and get grease all into all the different holes, uh, basically the voids there to make sure that uh, there's grease everywhere. So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get a big old glob of it, put it on my hand here, and I'm going to take the wide side of the bearing, face that down, and I'm just going to push it in and wipe. Um, and we're going to look for the grease to start poking out on the top. So we're just gonna do that. Over and over again. And you can see, you can see it start to come out of the top right there. That's showing me that it has made it through the different rollers. So we're gonna do that all the way around. It gets repetitive, but that's what we're gonna do. So you can see that we've got grease everywhere now. It kind of got a little smeared from the from the peaks, if you will, that are coming out. But I'm gonna kind of wipe it around the front, around the other side, uh, spin it a little bit to get it through there. Uh, and then I'm gonna kind of wipe off the excess. Obviously I want grease on everything, but I don't want a ridiculous amount of grease. So that should be pretty good right there. So drop it in. Um, Obviously you can get it sideways. It's pretty obvious when it is sideways, but make sure it's flat and there we go. Okay, so I don't want any grease on the outside of my seal, uh, which also means the inside of this. So I'm gonna clean that off. You don't have to be crazy about it, but uh, grease is unnecessary and might make it a little slipperier than we really want right there. So we're gonna press this guy in probably need to give it a gentle tap. Now one thing to note here is that this this seal is intentionally not going to be flush with this surface. Do not hammer it in until it's totally flush. It's going to be proud I believe by about two millimeters. And you can actually see, I don't know how well it comes out in camera on camera, but you can see that right there it's bottomed out but right over here, it's not. And that, you know, follows, you can see it's not as flush or as far down here as it is here. So just make sure you get that seated all the way. So I think that is gonna work. So this guy goes in here now and we do want some grease here. So you wanna grease the inside lip of that seal Don't have to go crazy, but just make sure all that rubber on the inside diameter there is uh, is wet, does have grease on it. Okay, and then carefully slip that in there. Okay, like that. Yeah. So the O-ring goes in this groove right here. Now the grease is there 
Uh, I am going to grease this. That's just to make sure it stays in place as I'm installing it. Um, really, once it's installed, it doesn't matter. So. so accordingly, you don't really need or want a ton of grease there. Um, you just want enough so that it'll stay, stay there as we're putting it into place. And I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. Um, grease is great at attracting dirt, so you don't really want any more than is necessary on the outside. So that's all together. We're gonna put it on the spindle, just like so. And that's not holding itself up right now because it is not complete. So we are going to put the spacer in. This is the bigger diameter spacer. You can see we're putting the big one in because this goes on the spindle. So that guy slips in there just like that. And that is a, an extremely thoroughly calculated and precise uh, spacer in there. So now we've already got that race uh, greased, so we're good there. So we're gonna grease the outside bearing now. Same deal as before. We're gonna try to force the grease in between all the rollers. So just get a good big old glob here. Wipe it on my hand. Maybe add a little more to it. And then same deal. We're just gonna force it in and look for the grease to come out through the top there. Okay, so you can see same deal as the other side. We've got the grease poking through there. I'm just gonna spin it, work it in a little bit more, and then kind of wipe it off so I don't have a ridiculous amount of grease in here or on my hand. And then we'll put it in. So that one slips in like so. It's starting to look a little more normal. And then our spindle snout spacer is gonna go next. So again, there's a taper here on the end that wants to point towards the car, towards the hub with the flat side that the nut is gonna sit against should be out. Okay, there you go. Okay, so our hub is together. We just need to tighten it down. Now, as far as the bearings are concerned, they are identical when they're new, but when once they've been worn into their races, they are no longer considered identical. So right now, it doesn't matter which one we put on the inside or the outside. If you're gonna take this apart later and rebuild it, be sure that you keep the outside bearing separate from the inside bearing and put them back in that in their original location because you can't, can't swap it like that. Okay, so next step is to put the nut on. We're gonna put it on and torque it to 125 pound-feet. Now again, one of the really nice things about this is that with those spacers in there, there is no adjustment needed. You don't have to worry about doing any kind of fancy work. You don't have to worry about coming back in later to re-torque it. Torque it down, uh, again, 125 pound-feet, stake the nut, and you're done. So we'll do that right now. Take the nut. Spin that guy on there. Put my safety glasses back on just in case, and we are gonna stake this nut down. So you don't have to go crazy with it, you just wanna make sure that it's pushed down into the groove right there so that it won't back off. Okay, so the hub is basically on now. Uh, we just need to finish sealing it up. So the dust cap goes on here, pretty straightforward. Bet you could probably figure that out. I'm gonna clean up this edge to get as much grease off of it as possible. This piece should already be clean, theoretically, but you wanna make sure it is. Uh, you wanna use a little bit of sealant here. Permatex number two is a good one. Uh, this Forma gasket um, is a good one as well. Just put a little bit around the edge. You want enough that it'll seal, but you do not want to put a ton on there because if you put a ton on there, it could contaminate the grease and kill the bearings. So less, less is more here. 
So again, just you want you want enough on there to make sure that it's going to seal, but you don't want a ton on there. And I would keep it towards the outside edge as well. Um, definitely air on the side of the outside. If it if it goes if it falls off this edge a little bit, it doesn't matter if it falls off this edge. Then it could contaminate the the grease. This stuff has a tendency to get everywhere. So seals really well, but it is messy. So I'm gonna try to line up the holes to start off with. Not the most critical thing in the world because it'll spin, but the closer we get it on the front end, the less we have to move it around. So that'll hold itself in place with that sealant on there as well. Uh, temporarily, of course. So we'll put the screws in to finish it off. And as always, don't tighten any of the screws until all the screws are in. So get them started and that's it. So don't go crazy tightening these down. They're just Phillips heads, so they're clearly not designed for a ton of torque. Get them snug, but that should do it. You can see We've got just a tiny little line of that sealant poking out here, which is fine. Again, poking out on the outside, no big deal. Okay, so the hub is installed. So now put everything else back the way it was in reverse order. So rotor, caliper, uh, the caliper, bolts, if you're using factory brakes, 50 pound feet. If you're using something else, refer to those directions. Uh, and then the wheel, 85 pound feet. All right, so that's the installation of the Mazda Motorsports NANB front hub. Hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna pick up a set, you can go to Mazda Motorsports uh, if you are a racer and have an account with them. We've got them as well flymiata.com. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more Flying Miata content, please be sure to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. If you have questions, please reach out to our customer support department or just leave them in the comments. We'll get to them. We'll see you guys next time.